What's up guys? Welcome to this super concise video about everything you need to know about the middle level IC. First of all, who am I? My name is Josefa Capati. I'm the founder of Scalar Learning and I've been a private math tutor in Los Angeles for the last five years. I've worked with students for the SAT, the ACT, and most importantly, the IC. And during the last five years, I've tutored over 3,000 hours. I'm also the creator of an online curriculum for the IC called Power 9 IC Middle Level Math. Now, I'm not only a tutor that teaches the IC, I've also taken the middle level IC, and not just a practice IC, a real bona fide official IC test. I did this back in 2016, and I scored perfect nines, a perfect score on every single section. So, I know a thing or two about the IC. IC stands for Independent School Entrance Exam. The middle level IC is the independent school entrance exam that students must take to apply to competitive middle schools all across the country. Currently, there are over 2,000 member schools that use the IC, over 100 of which are based in Los Angeles. The middle level IC covers four areas, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, reading comprehension, and math achievement. When it comes to the verbal reasoning section, all the IC is trying to assess is vocabulary and understanding how to use words in context. So there's a number of analogy type questions as well as sentence completion questions. The quantitative reasoning section is all about math. It's a number of math questions that are multiple choice as well as quantitative comparison questions where you have to look at values in column A and column B and decide whether one is larger than the other, they're equal, or there's not enough information to make a decision. The reading comprehension section consists of six passages with six questions per passage. There's 36 total questions that have to be completed in 35 minutes. Last but not least is the math achievement section, which is another dose of mathematics, and it consists of 47 questions that must be completed in 40 minutes or less. The biggest question that I always get is how is the IC scored? The IC is scored by section, so you will get an individual score per section. Now, you can get anywhere from a 1 to a 9, and these are called stay 9s. A 1 is the lowest that you can get, a 9 is the highest. So if you get four 9s, in, a 9 in each section, that means you've gotten the highest score possible on the middle level IC. So how do you get a 9? How do you get an 8? How do you get a 7? Now, it's not a fixed percentage. The tricky thing about the IC is these stay nines correlate directly to percentile rank. So if you want to know what it takes to get an 8 or what it takes to get a 9, you have to look directly to the percentile rankings. For example, if you fall in the 77th to 88th percentile rank for any of the sections, you'll get a 7 on that particular section. So remember, it's really important to recognize that your score is solely dependent on your competition. Now, a lot of companies have tried to give breakdowns of what a percentage means with relation to a stay nine, like a 50% will give you a five, 60% will give you a six, so on and so forth. This is completely incorrect. And now, first of all, you can't even make these generalizations because it shifts every year from year to year. But what you can do and what I've done, if you have access to good data, is look at the data and follow the trends. And so that's what we've done here. This is not presented anywhere by any other company, we have actual real hard data from students to try and give you a rough idea of where a percentage can place you in terms of a stay nine score. When you look at these four different charts, you can start to get an idea of where you need to be roughly to get a six, to get an eight. Now there is some overlap in these zones and that is because from year to year, different percentages on the test in different sections will rank you in a different percentile, which means an 85% one year might get you an eight eight, whereas another year an 85% in the same section could get you a seven. So it's important to be aware of the fact that a specific percentage doesn't necessarily mean you'll get an exact stay nine score, but you can get an idea for the range of what you need in order to safely be above a six or safely be above a seven, whatever your criteria may be. Another question that I get all the time is, what does my son or daughter need to get on the IC in order to get into this school? It varies from school to school. Some schools like Harvard Westlake or Brentwood or Winward may value the IC more heavily and may want higher scores. 
But the bottom line is every single school looks at the applications in total. They want to see a strong interview. They want to see a family that's going to be supportive of their child. And they also want to see strong academics, which includes the IC score. I hope this video answered every question you have about the middle level IC. If it didn't, make sure to leave your questions in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, click that like button. And last but not least, if you want more information on everything related to education, make sure to subscribe to the Scalar Learning channel.